In this slice, we have a horizontal section of a human brain through the interventricular foramen and the posterior commissure. And I'm going to point out various structures, starting with the cerebellum. We can see a little bit right here. And then we have the inferior colliculus right here and right there. Inferior colliculus is used for detecting changes in the auditory environment. And then we have the superior colliculus right here of the tectum. And the superior colliculus is used for visual reflexes, coordinating head and eye movement, and also visual tracking of moving objects. And then we also have the periaqueductal gray is going to be located right here by the cerebral aqueduct right here. And the periaqueductal gray is involved in descending modulation of pain and it's located just outside the cerebral aqueduct which is right there, that one little white spot right there. And we have the posterior commissure right here which is actually a bundle of white fibers connecting the two hemispheres. Um, don't let this stain confuse you. These are actually white fibers. And it's important in the bilateral pupillary light reflex. And then we also have the pretectal area right about there. And the pretectal area receives inputs from the eyes and is involved also in the pupillary light reflex and sends outputs to the Ed Edinger-Westfall nucleus. Okay, and then over here we have the hippocampus, this kind of seahorse shape structure right here. We have one on each side of our hemispheres. And the hippocampus is a part of the limbic system and plays an integral role in memory processes. And a hallmark symptom of Alzheimer's disease is damage to the hippocampus. Okay, moving on, we have the fornix right here, the body of the fornix. And then we have the septal nuclei, a little hard to see it, but it's right up there. And then we have choroid plexus involved in creating CSF. And then right here we have the thalamus. We also have one over here, this side right here, a variety of different nuclei. We have the MGN, medial geniculate nucleus, involved in sound. And then we have lateral geniculate nucleus, LGN, right here. And then we have the um, interthalamic adhesion, which connects both sides of each of the thalamus, right here. Okay, and then right here, we have the internal capsules. We have another one right here. And then we have the globus pallidus part of the basal ganglia. And then we have the putamen right here. And then we have, it's a little difficult to see, but we have the external capsule, the claustrum, and then the extreme capsule right there.